Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Cheat Code Jiu Jitsu. Jeff here again. Uh, we're starting on this lockdown path and we've worked on getting to the lockdown, setting it up from different positions, sliding into it. And now we're gonna progress forward a little bit. We have to decide where it is that we're looking to go with it. There's a couple of different main paths that we can go down. One of them is an overhook path, and, which I'll, I'll talk about in just a moment. And then the other is an underhook path. The overhook path typically leads to butterfly guard, X guard, things of that nature. Underhook path leads to a lot of the more traditional lockdown sweeps like old school electric chair, getting up to dog fight, all that kind of stuff. So the underhook path is what we're gonna start working. Uh, we're gonna show our way down that and work through the sweeps on that and then we'll come back at the end and we'll work the overhook path. So today we're gonna to talk about how to get the underhook if that's what you want and your opponent's not letting you get it. How to set it, what underhooks we're talking about and how to slide into that position so you can begin down that path. So stay tuned. So when I say underhook path versus overhook path, what, what arm we're really talking about here is whichever leg I have trapped, that's the arm that I'm focusing on. This arm that's on the other side, uh, it certainly plays into things, but it's not as big of a deal. The near side underhook or overhook is usually a lot easier to control in half guard. The one that becomes particularly problematic is the far side, because of course if Chad gets in here and he's got the underhook on me, this becomes really difficult because he can use that underhook to flatten me out. It's hard for me to get back up. Uh, I'm not going to be turning into Chad and doing a lot of stuff in that direction. I'm looking for, for butterfly hooks and things like that to, get, to use that to elevate and get up. If I'm wanting to go down the half guard sweep path uh, for the half guard stuff rather than transitioning to a different style of guard, I need to control this underhook, which is generally a good thing to do in half guard anyway. So. Far side underhook, he's gonna want it to flatten me out. I'm gonna wanna take that and occupy that space so that I can start working my way underneath of it. So how do we do it? Now it's most basic, the easiest way to catch that underhook is to catch it while I'm actually sliding into the position. So let me actually change sides here. So we talked in, in some of our previous videos about the setups and making sure that whatever my outside leg is is going to be on the inside so I can move myself into half guard. As we're moving into this position, if I'm already up on my side, this is optimal and I'm using my frames up here to keep Chad off of me. If I can just slide this underhook in quick first, that's going to be the best way to do this. What he wants to do is he wants to flatten me out of my back and he needs that underhook to do it. So the worst case scenario for me is to get to here where I'm already flat on my back, Chad's already got a hold of that underhook, and now I've got to build my way back up and try to figure out a way to do it. So always remember that if you can catch the underhook first while you're going in so that you can come in with double underhooks, that's always gonna be the best. Let's assume though that I didn't get that. Chad got this far side underhook. He's doing a good job. He's got me flattened out. I'm on my back. So step one to getting this going is getting the underhook back. Uh, there's two really good ways that I like to work. There's a few others, but these are the main ones. The first one is called the jaws of life. So I'll show this kind of from both sides. There's, there's a little bit of handwork that goes along with this. But Chad's doing a good job. He's got head and arm control, so he's got cross face pressure on this side. He's got the underhook on the opposite side, and I just don't have anywhere to dig this underhook. Okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this hand that he's got the underhook on, and I'm looking to get in front of his face. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my fist and just run it right here kind of underneath of his cheekbone and reinforce right there. My other hand is then going to come and reinforce my fist and then I'm just going to push up. I'm trying to create space. This hand is going to then come off and come underneath and I'm going to make a fist and put it by his chest. I'm not using this to try to bench press Chad off of me. Unless he's about 100 pounds and I'm a 250 pound monster, that's just not going to work. All I'm trying to do is, you can see when Chad's down here tight, I got no room to move. I got no room to dig under hooks or anything else. When I push and then push, you see that a little bit of pocket of space opened up here. I want to take that space and keep it so this hand comes in. I'm resting it right here on the top of his chest, right at the junction with his shoulder. And I'm going to hold that to keep him up. 
This hand is currently across his face. I'm gonna slide my elbow in and down. So now I've got both my arms inside and then it's just turn, come through, and now I've got my double underhooks, okay? So one more time, Chad's got head and arm control. We're fighting. This may take a second because I may not be able to just get this in immediately. I can bridge and push around, but once I find myself with a little bit of space on this side, I'm gonna come up, run right in front of Chad's face, turn him to the side, use this hand to reinforce, push him up, create that space, slide this hand in, put a fist to create a solid frame, and then this elbow slides inside. Once I can get that elbow inside, that's an easy transition to float through, and now I've got my double underhooks. Now I'm still on my back in this position, and we're gonna work in the next video how to get off of our back and up onto our side so we can get things going, but for now, that's what we're looking for is to get that double underhook position even if I'm flat on my back. All right, so that was the Jaws of Life. This one is actually my favorite, and it's called a whip down. Any of you guys are familiar with lockdown, you probably heard whip up before. This is a very similar type motion, but I'm, do, I'm trying to accomplish a slightly different purpose than I do with the whip up, which we'll cover in the next video. I use this when I've got a guy like Chad on top of me who's really just super dedicated to this underhook. There is no jaws of life. I'm trying to crank him up. He's not letting me inside, and he's just got a death grip on this underhook. So here's what I'm gonna do. Here's the footwork. I've gotta have my good tight lockdown in place, and remember how I was talking in the previous videos about how we wanna pinch this all together and get a good tight lock on his leg. All right, watch my legs to see the footwork on this. I'm gonna actually pull up at an angle back towards this far side, like a 45 degree angle. So I turn just a little bit to the side and then I pull up. And then what I'm gonna do is in one motion, I'm gonna extend my lock down and whip it down really hard in this direction. Okay, that's the motion that I'm looking to do. Now, when I do that, I'm also gonna take my left arm that he's got the underhook on and I'm gonna pinch down just a little bit on this elbow. The reason why is when I do this, Chad's gonna get knocked on his side. So, lock down, pinch, pull up, whip down. Now you see he turned, and I'm gonna get a super easy sweep off of this. Because his arm is buried deep inside. Tell you what, let's, let's come back and, and get a shot of, get a shot of this when I whip down. And I create this space and then come and look. You can see the angle of his shoulder where he had that underhook is just horrible. It's very, very difficult for him to come back up. Now it can move around. And at this point, that's just a simple sit up and I'm on top. Now, good experience guys, you're not gonna get that with. Maybe you're gonna get, you know, guys purple, maybe even brown belt level with that once, maybe. Once they realize the power of that whip, they're gonna feel it coming and you're not gonna get that at all. It's good to know it because it does happen occasionally. But what's gonna happen far more often is I'm gonna be in this position, I'm gonna be trying to dig my jaws of life, Chad's gonna be holding on really tight, I pinch my lockdown up and I go to whip down and he's gonna post because he doesn't wanna go up. Now look at this hole that he just created. That's what I actually want is he posts and then I slide my underhook inside. Now here's my transition that I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna go from here, and then I'm actually gonna whip him back in the other direction. This is gonna turn into a nice deep underhook, and then this hand is actually gonna go down by his legs. Okay, so now I end up with my right hand kind of underneath of his leg, and then I've got a really super deep underhook right here, up on top. Uh, Eddie Bravo calls this having electric underhooks because this is a really super great setup for the electric chair. Uh, which we're going to cover in a few videos from now. But for now, just getting to this position is the main thing that I want to cover. So, I'm in lockdown. I'm flat on my back. Chad's got me pinned down. Can't get my jaws of life working. Clamp the underhook. Whip down. Chad's smart, so he posts. I just simply weave this from here to the back of his elbow. This hand is going to go down by the legs. I'm going to draw my lockdown back. I come back and now I've got my underhook. Now, Chad's doing a smart thing. He's basing out. He's putting a whizzer in. We'll cover that a little bit more in the next video. But that's super important. It keeps me from taking his back. 
there's another thing that I want to talk about right now, prompted by the fact that he's in good position, and that is when I have this underhook with this hand, where do I want it in terms of placement when I come up? The worst possible place for me to have it is right here across the center of his back. Any guy who knows how to do a really good strong wizard, especially anybody who's wrestled before, if you have your hand right smack in the center of their back and, the, and then they throw a wizard in on you, they're gonna put so much pressure down on top of your shoulder, you're not gonna do anything with that underhook. So for the most part, I've got three places that I put my underhook that works. There's on the leg, super low, and super high. So on the leg, is going to be the extreme low version of this so for example from my whip down let's back up here let's assume that i got here and i come back maybe i don't want to go for the electric chair but i push this off and i come back up now watch when i roll this is going to actually come up around chad's leg kind of like i'm doing a single leg and rest that works because having it down that low means there's no real good way for Chad to do a whizzer on me and actually put any pressure on it. By the same token, when I come up, I can also go here. So I'm down around his waist, really low. Uh, he's got some stuff that he can do from here, but his whizzer's still not as effective because I'm down around the waist, so that can be a good place to put it. Third place to put it, and this is actually a fun one to work on, is doing it really high. Not halfway through, but actually up really high. And the other thing that I want to talk about with this is hand placement. So you see my hand right now, it's turned palm down. This is actually not where I want it. And here's why. Chad, go ahead and put some wizard pressure on me. Oh yeah, that didn't work at all. Okay, even getting it high here means Chad can still put a little bit of pressure. But if I take this hand and I actually turn it over, Chad, put that wizard down now. Just that little change from palm down to rolling my pinky over makes it a profoundly different experience for him trying to put that pressure down. So I can actually use this to jack that up really high. Now, if I got a guy with a weak wizard, simple transition, I'm just gonna take his back from there. Most good guys are still at least gonna be able to keep enough pressure down on that that I won't be able to switch out to their back. But this is a fantastic setup for some of my sweeps to have that rolled up here. So when you're looking to set your underhook, either super low on the leg, super low on the waist, or if you're gonna come up high, this is situational, but if you wanna come up high, don't just lock your hand here. Make sure you turn that over and then get set up here. So between the jaws of life and the whip down, that will usually get me an underhook most of the time if I'm going in that direction. If I can't get the underhook from one of those two transitions, that's usually a good sign to me that I need to start switching out and just accepting the underhook and working towards my butterfly, X guard, leg lock, whatever path that comes in the other direction that will be covered later. So come back in our next video. We're going to talk a little bit more about what to do once we have that underhook and how to get up on our side, assuming we're still flattened out and we didn't come up there with the whip down. And we've got a couple transitions that I can use to get you to your side so you can then get started with your sweeps. So if you like the video, make sure you hit the like button. It really helps me out a lot. Subscribe to the channel. Turn on notifications. You get a notification every time we upload a new video. See you guys next time. Thanks.